Welcome to this episode of Shop Talk Express. Today I'm with Craig Phillipson, Managing Director of Shopworks. Thanks for joining me. It's a pleasure and thank you for inviting me. Of course. Shopworks is a retail consultancy that focuses on how and why people shop to create solutions that deliver memorable shopping experiences. So let's just dive in here. So Craig, how can Shopworks help retailers quickly improve their retail performance? Ah, oh, well, thank you. That's uh, it, it's it's a good question, and uh, often the, the the question is framed also with the with the question how can how can we do it cheaply? Um, <laughs> and, and probably the key you know the key that we've found um, after a lot of years of, of research and, and following people and observing how they shop, and particularly in petrol forecourt retail. There's a very fast journey from the door to the to the cash till, and essentially what what that means is that a lot of people never really get exposed to all of the goods and services that the retailer has to offer. So you know the, the simple key is to say, look, what what we know is that people shop at sixty degrees. That's your your natural arc of vision. They turn if they have to at about forty five degrees, and to sell them something. You have to get them within 1.2 meters of that product and service. So, so the real trick is to extend the journey to the counter or to the destination point. And you know, in the old shopping saying, expose products to the danger of being sold. And and that's really the, the simplest way to to analyze and, and and think about how to quickly sell more things. Wow. Now I'm doing angles and math in my head. That's that's amazing stats. I never really thought about that like that. Thank you for explaining it. Um, so one of the things that's growing a lot in uh, convenience retail, especially around the globe, is food service. Incredibly important, incredibly important to get people from the uh, forecourt inside. And we've seen a lot of growth around the world in bakery and coffee. But is there anything else that you've seen um, in terms of food service that's uh, a good opportunity or a perspective? Um, perspective for convenience stores to work with yeah i mean you know typically and i think we all know this we we all see lots and lots of uh of coffee you know it, it's as, as they say it's the new black gold um high margin people coming uh, back for it um time and time again and and the growth of that has been phenomenal um I think the key now is is to build on that start and start to say, okay, what, what can I now offer that complements the coffee? And it's it's not just another coffee. <laughs> um, you know, we, we've got to look at the simple stuff. You know, the the uh, simple food for now attachments um, and and start doing that better and better. Um, and and then you you start to look further. I think at the at the food for now opportunity, and and people are doing it differently. You know, up in uh, up in Denmark, it's very strong. Over in Ireland, where many of us have been on those great tours and, and seen seen the the food food for now offers, and and that's even expanding now into into food plazas. You know, Junction 14 in Ireland and and Lion Place down down in Argentina are, are tremendous stop offs for motorists, where you just get a huge amount of choice, and and it's become the the kind of food for now destination. And, and I think there's more mileage in that. Uh, you know, we see uh, EG Group, um, you know, adding multiple food for now offers in their sites, whether that's, you know, Greg's, which is a, is a bakery offer, plus Subway, which, which I think is, is universal. Um, and, and they don't tend to cannibalize each other. They tend to complement each other, um, you know, and then you've got a Starbucks machine and so it goes on. So, so I think increasingly it's about, good um, food for now and, and, and food to go offers that that will become more and more important um, for the petrol forecourt and convenience retailer. Yeah, definitely. I mean, consumers have two hands. So you put coffee in one, that's some food in the other one, right? <laughs> exactly right. Exactly right. And <laughs> interesting you say that. And, you know, we've done lots of work in, in kind of packaging for that stuff. And what, what you often forget is that that certain things are really difficult to eat in your car. Um, you know, and pizza is only really taking off now that they've started to make it in an oblong shape <laughs> and not a triangle and, and give you some packaging that makes it easier for you to, to eat it on the go. So, so it's, a, you know, it's a, it's a holistic, holistic offer. Yeah, that's incredible. That's very, I haven't, well, now that I think about it, I guess I have seen oblong pizza. 
Um, now, one of the other things too, as I mentioned earlier, is bringing people from the forecourt inside, but now very important to start focusing on for a lot of retailers is EV charging. Now I know this is becoming um, bigger and, and broader throughout the globe, especially in different regions where, um, where it's, 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 it's hard to get someone out of their car. Now, especially harder now that they have a lot of entertainment in said car. So um, what, what kind of um, opportunities can you offer retailers to think about in terms of getting those EV customers inside? Yeah, it's, uh, again, it's another pertinent question. And, <laughs> you know, the, the, the investment in, in these networks is, is long term. Um, and you, you've got to think today about your next 10 year horizon. EV is coming and EV drivers, as, as I think we're starting to observe, behave slightly differently. You know, the ones we see at the moment, uh, you know, EV cars are, are kind of top of the end, top of the range at the moment. They've got great entertainment systems. They've got, it's really comfortable. It's nice to, nice to stay in your car and you don't have to get out and, and pay inside. Um, and that's a challenge. You know, we, we see figures of you know, around 25% of people get out of the car. If, if they do get out of the car, a lot of them just want to go to the loo. So you better make sure that, that you lose a clean. Um, otherwise, they, they, they won't be uh, charging with you again. And, and we have to make sure that the, um, you know, the, the offer is really good once they get inside. The converse to that is we have to start taking stuff to the car, you know, whether that's delivery to the window or, um, or uh, any other mechanism that, that we, we, can, we can get to, will start to, start to help the sales from inside. Yeah, and it's certainly maximizing those uh, those angles too. I'm sure, um, and that's where you certainly can help those angles, and also that one to two meters from a, a path to purchase, right, <laughs> where exactly. you can reach out and grab it. Exactly right. Now, just looking outside, maybe outside the store, around the store, are there any other um, non fuel offers that retailers could start to look to as well? Yeah, you know, I'm 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 backing. I don't think I'm alone in it, but uh, I think EV or ICE cars are all going to need washing. So I think uh, you know, I think I think car wash is going to make a latent comeback. Um, you know, it, the the machinery is improving, the return on investments improving, um, and and I I you know pre, uh, subscription not prescription um, is is starting to make a difference. Particularly, you know, we've seen that with Circle K. So I think I I see that as a as a long term winner. Yeah, certainly um, getting getting something in those hands that they can eat and do while they're in the car wash is not a bad, uh, exactly right. they, now, you, now you're now you hitting them all around. <laughs> well, that's, that's, you know, we talk about that, about the halo effect and about the uh, interdependencies of all, all the all the different offers and everything is important to everything else on a, on a retail forecourt. Oh my goodness. Yes, of course. So Craig, one last question. What do you think the biggest challenge or, or and or the biggest opportunity for forecourt retailers is over the next five years? Um, I, the way we see it, I think data is probably the biggest opportunity, and and I don't think enough people have got their head around that opportunity yet. You know, we we talk about interdependencies, we talk about um, you know network planning and format planning and site planning and shelf planning, and, and that all relies on understanding what people are buying, understanding what your coffee sales are doing to your car wash sales, what your fuel sales are, are doing to your grocery sales. And, and you, you need to be interpreting all of those key performance indicators and benchmarks, and you need to be tracking yourself both this week against next week, but also against your, against your competitors. And you know, that, that's something we've been working hard to, uh, to benchmark over the last, over the last uh, 20 years. That's incredibly important. So paying attention to everything you're doing, everybody else is doing, there's a lot, a lot to do there. So Craig, it's been fantastic um, having you on here. Uh, there's certainly more you can find on our website, globalconvenienceStorefocus.com, where you can find more about Craig and ShopWorks. And I appreciate your time today. Have a good one. Thank you for having me. And thanks for watching.